Hey everybody, what's going on? Hey, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's going down again up in here. It's this half hour of power. This is our prophet James Thayer once again over here with food for your journey from our ministry called Thine Kingdom Come Ministries. I like that. That's good. It just has a nice prayer ring to it. Thine Kingdom Come Ministry. You know, thine will be done, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, I got another episode. We got half hour power right here. If you get ready to turn to your Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 27, and we'll kick it right off. You know, how many of y'all out there that's listening to my, this podcast that God has blessed us with, it's getting some out of this. It's getting some. We want to know your. Get, shoot us an email. Shoot us an email or something. Shoot it to us. Or write in the comments after listening to it. Let us know how this blessed you. Or if it got you, you know what I'm saying? Because we need to know how you feel. Whole, all of y'all. Not just some of y'all, but everybody. Because this, te this telecast going on. It even goes all the way to Nigeria, to Australia. I got that's people in Australia that are hitting me up. I got people in Nigeria, Africa hitting me up. I, they they hit me up more than y'all here in the United States. Okay, so I guess this is a worldwide thing. But I also want to give a shout out to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, who humbly laid down the cross for me, and the soul people that own this station at Grace and Truth Radio dot world. And my awesome sister, Sister Marta Evening. So I want to bring me. I want to thank y'all that uh, she has been a blessing. And it's, it's God using her to open up so many doors. And we just want to thank her for these opportunities of being able to come to you. You know, God put on her heart. Y'all keep her and her ministry mm -hmm. lifted up with prayer. Her ministry comes on on Mondays. And she has a, a couple of more. The one with her and a, another lady named Maureen. Just look on the schedule that's on there, but I strongly encourage you to listen to her podcast on there because she is an apostle with a lot of meat to give you, okay? Her name is Marta Greenman, okay? I get her middle name sometimes, I know the Greenman. So uh, get on there and check it out as well. So let's get ready to start. And also, before we even start, it is election time coming up, yo. So we are going to be pushing for you to vote this UO amendment rights and vote this coming election. Let your voice be heard. You ain't got to agree with everybody. You just go with the conviction on your heart, okay? But uh, exercise your right. That's the only way things are going to get done. It's a, it's, a, it's a democracy, and it's your right. You know what I'm saying? I'm an ex felon Understand? And I got my voting rights back when I got cleared my sentence that I did, my wrong that I done. So I have been, I've been voting ever since 2002. I got, I got out of my paper 2002, so I've been the next year. I've been voting every year ever, ever since on local, state, and uh, government-wide levels, okay? So check into that. If you're an ex-felon, check and see in your state and your local area. But here in Texas, you do. You can. You have that right back. But other places, they are doing some other stuff that's going on that I don't know if it's right or wrong, but it's been going on. So, check, okay? Very vital that you check. Okay, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for allowing us to come together at this point in time. I pray and plead the blood of Jesus over this ministry, over this word that's going to be coming forth. God, I pray, dear Father, that it touch the hearers, the, uh, the hearers, and especially the doers of your word. And it make hearers to be more doers of your word. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray, dear Father, that, 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 that the enemy be smashed down, he be exposed, because the Bible says that we are not ignorant of his devices. So we thank you right now, pray, and plead the blood of Jesus, God, over the radio stations, over this radio station, and over this word, that it go forth and be show forth demonstration and with power. In Christ Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Turn to your Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 27. Very familiar text if you read the Bible before. This is talking about, let me sum it up in a nutshell what it's talking about. It's talking about, this is about the time when Jesus had died after he died on the cross. Uh, uh, when he had died on the cross. And certain things had happened, uh, uh, verse 51. And what we're going to talk about is the veil. The veil, the veil. What is the veil? 
title of the sermon is Don't Sew That Veil Back Up. Don't sew it up. Don't do it. A lot of people don't understand what a veil is. Let me tell y'all what a veil is. The definition of veil is this here. A veil is something, and this is the original Greek uh, definition to that word. Veil means something spread thoroughly, thoroughly, the door screen to the most high place in the Jewish temple. It was a place that was the most high. Where it, all, that nobody could go behind the veil back in those days in the biblical times. They couldn't go back behind the veil unless you was the high priest in the Jewish time. But now that we are died, that Jesus died, he died and he gave us gifts, we are of the royal priesthood now. And so that means we don't have to go behind a physical veil, but we can go behind the veil in the spiritual realm because we are one-on-one -on -one with Christ Jesus now. Jesus is the bridge to God, and that's what a lot of people gonna have trip gonna gonna trip out on anyway. But whatever, they need to study to show themselves approved, and maybe they can get some experience in God and come in their life and show them that Jesus is the way. But they ain't gonna get it by just studying and reading the Bible. They're gonna have to have seek and seek and seek, and then they'll find. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus only because the only the only thing God responds to is faith. So you got to have faith. Faith is believing when it ain't nothing else to believe. What's the definition of faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So if you're trying to look for faith in Christ Jesus in the seen realm, then you're going to miss it entirely because Jesus is in the invisible realm now. And that's the way he opera got us to operating is by faith in him, by believing. So the thing is right there, that's why such things as a believer and an unbeliever. So at this point in time, it says, after Jesus had died, after God had shed his tears, after he had been beat all night, and on the cross, he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? And after he had died, then this would happen. It said, and with, in verse 50, it says, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. That means he died, physically died. But check it out, verse 51, it said, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. Now, the thing about that there, if it was ripped from the bottom to the top, then people kind of could be like, well, somebody came in and sabotaged it. You know what I'm saying? But let me tell you something about that veil. That veil was, the veil in that temple was 30 feet high and 30 feet wide. Did you hear what I just said? 30 feet wide, 30 feet high. Ain't no human being going to get up there and rip something that big from the top. That was a God thing. And that's the thing they could. They tried to deny God and all this, even with the temple. See, God, he really, he wanted the veil ripped is because, why he wanted the veil ripped? Because God, it, it, right now, the veil was the only, was the most holy spot in God. Is, he, he had a rip to let people know that anybody can come to him. You do not have to go through a priest. You don't have to go through a rabbi. You don't have to go through a high, a uh, person hierarchy anyway to get to God no more. He really had that rip after Christ died so that you can come to him in the fullness of him. But Jesus Christ, you can go through Christ to get to God. That is amazing. I'm, I'm bubbling in my skin right now just hearing that because I don't need no, no in-between. I don't need no mediator. I don't need somebody else to help. I need to go to so-and-so and pay him so he can pray. No, you ain't got to. I can go to him myself. He is my advocate. He is my uh, uh, propitiation. Propitiation. He is my go-betweener. So check it out. So it says right there. He said it was ripped from the top to the bottom. Then after that, it says... And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints were slept, arose. Most came up out of their graves after that. Nobody, no, not even a lot of preachers and even priests in the temple could get up there and see that. So could you again, man, never in the history of Jewish history had anybody that was not a high priest, they would die if they went behind the most hold of that veil. And then to see that thing rip like that there, do you know that that veil had 50 loops on it? It had 50 loops that held that big curtain up, that big screen up, 50 loops. The number 50 means jubilee, y'all. Jubilee means liberty. Jubilee meant in the old Jewish Testament, in the Jewish Testament, the old school, patriarchal uh, 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 Old Testament, it meant that 
after 50 years that if you was a slave to any type of debt or anything, you were declared free after 50 years. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that was freedom right there that was going on. Not only that, 50 loops, y'all. 50 loops. And the number 50 means in the New Testament, Pentecost. Everybody know about Pentecost. So if you don't, you need to read in the book of Acts chapter 1, uh, uh, chapter 1 and read chapter 2 about Pentecost. The Bible said when Pentecost had fully come. So that's awesome right there in a sense right there. So check it out. The veil is ripped over there. So let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. It's got a lot of meat up in here. Because that, that, that veil had was 30 feet high, 30 feet wide. It had 50 loops that held up for the curtain and 50 catches, which meant golden knobs. It would have freedom written all over it. But that freedom had been expressed through us because while the priests back then were all caught up in the same thing that's going on right now, politics, trying to be more political than godly, trying to uh, operate through that. And then God got displeased with that. And so that's why he had to send his own son in the volume of the book to get the job done. My God. So 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it speaks about this here. 3 and verse 12 through 16. It says, Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, as which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not stare fastly look at the end of which was abolished. See, that was abolishment that was about to happen with this veil. He had to put a veil over his face. But their minds were blinded for unto this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. So that's why if you believe in the, the Old Testament being the way, you have a veil over your heart. Yeah, I just said that. And I ain't scared because the word just said it. And if you got veil, it's untaken away. And the Bible says in the book of Galatians, it said, anybody that lives by the law has fallen from grace. So if you want to fall from grace, that great unmerited favor that's out there, keep on trying to live by the law. Keep on trying to sow that law back up. Trying to sow all these, these uh, uh, doctrines and sow all these other uh, 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 works that you need to do to try to get to God. All the other, I'm going to go, I'm going to go before myself right quick, but I got to slow down because I'm excited that God took all these ordinances away through Christ Jesus that I ain't got to go through nobody else's approval to get to God. Now, I know a lot, but a lot of people, they still use that nowadays. They say, well, I don't have to go to church uh, to hear from God. That is true. You don't have to go to church to hear from God. There's a lot of things God has done that wasn't out of the church. But he or specifically ordained to not uh, 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 forsake the assembling of, of the brethren such as ourselves. Because that's what we gather strength. We are the body of Christ. So ain't no long range of Christians out there. So all while you're over here trying to just do it, you will not get the whole fullness trying to do it by yourself, praying by yourself, doing everything by yourself, because God didn't come down, he didn't send Jesus down here by himself, God is not in heaven operating heaven all by himself, he has angels, he has his son, he has the Holy Spirit, so ain't no long ranges, because if you long range, then that, then that goes to show, the Bible says, that for, if you do that, then he can't, the Bible says that, uh, out of the mouth of two or three, let witnesses, let every word be established. You ain't got two or three, so how are we going to confirm that what you're saying is true? Help me out, man. He said, this which veil is done away in Christ. Did you hear what I said? Let me say it again. I said, and this veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their hearts. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. If you just believe in that Moses was the way, there's one greater than Moses that came, the Bible said, and there's one that came greater than Abraham, my God. See, check it out. It says the ark was made of shittium wood. The same kind of wood that the ark that carried Noah for 40 days and 40 nights. Huh? Signifying that when the enemy comes in like a flood, 
That standard is the presence of the Lord that's raised up against you. Don't you allow, go to, now go down, let's go down here to Colossians chapter 2. Because you need to really get this one right here. Colossians chapter 2. Oh, I'm going to make sure you get it. because I'll do a part 2 of this to make sure you get this. Colossians chapter 2 started verse 15 through 18. Hallelujah. It says right here. Are you there yet? I can't hear you now. No, I'm messing with you. It says, uh, verse 13. No, no, no. Go start at verse 10. It says that ye are complete in him. Let me repeat that. You complete in who? In Christ Jesus. Complete. When Jesus said that the work is finished on the cross, it is finished, that goes so deep. You are supposed to depend on the finished work of Christ, not trying to add to it. Oh, am I holy enough? Am I, am I, am I walking right? Am I pure enough in God's eyesight? Is he going to keep me out? Is he going to bust me upside my head? Because I, you know, I might be stinking in the spirit. No, no, no. You're supposed to stink in the spirit because the Bible says that even your righteousness is as filthy rags. So your righteousness is going to mean nothing to God, only if it comes through Jesus Christ. Now it says, it says, in whom, verse 11, also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. See, in the Old Testament, you had to get circumcised. Circumcised means a piece of skin on a man's foreskin to know if he was a Jew or one of God's people or not. And if it wasn't, if it wasn't cut, then you was considered a Gentile and not one of God's people. Not one of the Jews. But it says right here, ye are made with the one without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Christ has, when you, when you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, your heart has been circumcised to know the will and know the experience and have, and have all the benefits of the kingdom of God established for you. That's awesome. Woo, Jesus did not that all the work. He done the work for you. You ain't hearing me. The only work that you need to do is believe. Now, I'm telling you this for real because I have a friend of mine that went into that Hebrew and Jewish stuff, and you cannot go back. That's, that's good for instruction. That's good for historical. It's good to be tutored in. But that is not the body of Christ. We don't have power in the Old Testament. The mm -hmm. yeah, only way you're going to get this is through the Holy Ghost. He got to reveal it to you. There's a lot of people right now, that's sewing up the veil trying to go back the Old Testament way to do it. I know I'm getting some folks mad up in here, but I don't care because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that's the scripture. That's the word. Either you believe it or you don't. You can't be flipped up and juggling around and, and, and sewing up the thing that Jesus, or that God himself had ripped down. It's the reason God ripped it down. He didn't rip it down for you to sew it back up again. And some of us do it ignorantly because we are uneducated. All we done messed around and got bewitched just like Peter was trying to do with Paul. Paul had to mess around and get on Peter and say, wait a minute, man. You walk with Jesus. Why are you trying to get these people to sew this veil back up and walk like in the old Jewish customs? You ain't supposed to do that. Oh, yeah, that's good right there. I'll put the Holy Spirit on that. So let's go right here. Verse 12. Buried with him in baptism, William, also ye are risen with him through the faith. Remember I said faith of the operation of God who had raised him from the dead. And you, let's say that again, word you, verse 13, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened, the word quickened meaning he made it alive, together with him, having forgiven you of all trespasses, not some, but all your trespasses are forgiven. Even the ones you did last night, you are forgiven. That's called grace. For the Bible says in the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9, it says that if you confess your sins, that if you confess your sins for Jesus, that he is faithful and he is just to forgive you and cleanse who? You from what? All unrighteousness. Oh, my God. He trying to tell you, I got the work already done. Why are you trying to go back and trying to add to it? I done put enough salt on dinner 
and you're going to mess around and put more salt in it and make it too salty to eat. It ain't going to be good for consumption when you keep trying to add to it. It's done. My God. Mm -hmm. Lord, yeah. Thank God that it's done. So it says, I, had, I told you I had a friend. He went back there. Now he think that he is a Jew. He got everything that, and he done throw it away. He used to be, he used to be a Christian rapper, a rap Christian. Now he don't do none of that no more. Cause now he has gone back to this trying to work, trying to eat right, trying to. I hope he ain't going trying to circumcise nothing down there, cause that show ain't gonna help me. He has done it over. But if you never know nowadays, you know, cause when you don't have his righteousness go all right, not have your righteousness through Christ. You'll go through any kind of means necessary to try to get it right some kind of way, even from the old school way God is telling you not to do it. So it says right here, you need to listen to this part right here. Blotting, blotting out the handwritten of ordinances that was against us. Whoa, whoa. They was against us, blotting. I-N-G. Why did he put ing right here if it's already blotted? He said because anytime somebody else try to tell you to, to, to sew it back up, I'm doing a whole nother work again trying to remind you I done already done it. I'm blotting out all the handwritten uh, ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way. He took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. So you don't have to worry about trying to perform no Feast of Weeks. You ain't got to worry about trying to do Purim. You ain't got to worry about trying to eat all the way. You know, I'm going to go to hell if I eat this here and, and, and not eat the way the Jews that I was supposed to my forefathers. And you know, all these stipulations that was there, oh, I need to go cut up a goat for sin offering. I need to go find a lamb outside in the backyard and cut it up. You ain't got to do that because Jesus was the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. Get back to what Jesus said. Somebody I'm talking to, quit trying to add to it. He's already done. He done already blotted out the handwritten ordinances. That's the reason they was there. The Ten Commandments was there to tell us what we were doing was wrong as sin. And Christ, we could never live up to the law. All the way, no way we could. Because if you break one commandment, what is Jesus said? You broke them all. I'm helping somebody out right now. It says, check it out, and he nailing, 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 nailing. Jesus already died. So why is it an IMG saying that he nailing it to the cross? If anything, he's nailed it to the cross. But it's saying he's nailing it to the cross. Why? Because he got to keep showing somebody that you got to believe that it's done. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. Triumphing, and triumphing over them. You are walking, blotting. The word blotting means this: to smear out. Example: to obliterate, erase tears. That's why people, the enemy, try to go in tears. Tears, figuratively, to pardon sin. Jesus took the sting out of death and the condemnation of the world and nailed it to the cross. <laughs> That's why you don't have to walk in sin. You ain't got to be, you don't even have to have guilt on you. If you got guilt on you, if you got shame on you from stuff that you've done, it's because you want to carry it. Because Paul said in the word, he said, laying down every way and the sin that do it so easily beset us. My God. I, I'm helping somebody out right now. I'm helping somebody religious tale out right now. Lay your religion down. Don't you sew that veil back up. It's done. Don't be trying to establish no other righteousness other than what God has said from the Old Testament to be performed through the New Testament of Jesus Christ being Lord and Savior. So I like to look at this stuff up historically and what we've done through. But we have been in a, we are in a new covenant. Either you believe it or you don't because you can't ride the fence on both sides. Hey, this is Prophet James here at Nine Kingdom Come Ministries. 
and another episode of Food for Who Journey, your journey. And we pray that you are blessed, and let's pray us out. Father, I pray that you bless somebody's eyes to be open, heart to be converted in the name of Jesus right now. So, Father, we thank you, and I pray and pray and pray that you stop somebody from trying to throw that veil back up that only you could have took down. And to take the veil up off their heart as well. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Love you. God bless you. This is Prophet James Hill signing off.